The Native Americans of the Northern Plains knew what storms could do. He knew this one would not end soon. The wind howled across the plains, tearing at the night. Snow swallowed the horizon, every breath colder than the last. Inside the teepee, the flame was small, but alive. The family sat close. No firewood left, no thick walls, just hide smoke and patience. Outside the thermometer bit at minus 30. Inside the air held near 60 degrees, warm enough to dream. They didn't fight the storm, they waited with it breathing together. Because the teepee wasn't just a shelter, it was alive, it breathed with them. Imagine standing there, nothing between you and the cold, but what your hands built. The Native Americans of the Northern Plains had learned this shape from the wind itself. The Great Plains taught them harsh lessons, walls fall, corners trap cold. But the cone, the cone breathes. He bent the poles carefully, 15 to 18 of them, each leaning toward the sky. Lodgepole pine, straight light, tough as bone. When the storm pressed down, the frame flexed but never broke. It bent, it breathed, it held. They understood air the way a hunter understands silence. It wasn't empty, it moved, it carried life. Inside the typey air flowed like water, rising, turning, escaping through the open top. At minus 35, that motion meant survival. He left the peak open 8 to 12 inches wide. Just enough for smoke to escape, just enough for breath to leave. The fire sat low in the heart of the circle, not large, just steady patient. It pulled the air upward, creating a rhythm older than language. Hot air climbed, cold air slipped in low, clean and dry. And the teepee, it didn't suffocate, it lived. Inside the air lingered near 60 degrees Fahrenheit while frost built its teeth outside. A buffalo hide could block 70% of the wind's bite, but it wasn't the hide that kept them alive. It was the flow, the breathing. The house itself inhaled and exhaled with them. When he slept, the smoke drifted upward in slow ribbons. When the wind shifted, the teepee sighed, never fighting, always yielding. The Native Americans had found a design that listened, a shelter that remembered how the world moves. They didn't trap the air, they lived with it. And because of that, they endured. The Native Americans knew warmth wasn't just about fire, it was about flow. He lifted the inner hide, a second skin, and let it hang quietly inside the teepee. Not tight, not sealed, just breathing. Between the two hides, they left a small gap about 10 inches wide. It didn't look like much, but that space was everything. Wind passed the outer wall and heat rolled along the inner one. They had learned this through years of storms. When smoke drifted low, they didn't panic. They listened. The typey like them had to breathe. He tied the rawhide cords to small wooden pegs one by one all around the circle, each knot, even each fold loose. Too tight and the house would choke. Too loose and the drafts would bite. Inside that narrow channel, the air moved slow and steady, a hidden river of warmth. The sleeping circle stayed near 60 to 65 degrees Fahrenheit, while outside the blizzard clawed at minus 30. The floor stayed dry. The children slept without shivering. The air still and alive hummed softly against the hides. When the wind shifted north, he eased the bottom edge. When it swung east, he pressed a tie and waited. They could feel the change with the back of a hand the house spoke through the hide. That liner wasn't decoration, it was memory sewn in buffalo skin, a quiet wisdom that no tool could replace. They didn't block the cold, they guided it, they shaped it. And because of that, the teepee stayed warm, even when the world outside froze solid. The storm outside still roared, but the house no longer fought it, it moved with it. Each gust pressed the hide and the liner whispered back a steady rhythm between cold and warm. They had built a wall that breathed. Now, they needed a fire that did the same. The flames couldn't roar, they had to last. Because in a blizzard, survival isn't about burning bright, it's about burning slow. The storm had been raging for hours. Outside, the wind screamed like something alive, clawing at the plains, wrapping the tippy in white noise and ice. Inside the light flickered like a heartbeat, soft, faint, alive. The Native Americans knew better than to build a big fire. He'd learned it the hard way when flames roared, warmth didn't last. Too much wood and the teepee filled with smoke, too little. 
and the frost crawled up from the ground. Out here, the line between heat and breath was razor thin, so they built a fire that breathed slow, not to fight the storm, but to outlast it. A slow pulse, steady and patient alive, like the people it warmed, he set the logs like ribs around a glowing heart, dry willow, never pine. Willow burned clean, hot, and slow. He used small pieces, added one at a time, never piled high. Because a tipi fire wasn't about brightness, it was about balance. When the draft rose through the smoke hole, the flame leaned with it. It never fought the air, it moved with it. That's how it lived. The heat spread low and wide, not high. At the sleeping ring, the air held steady near 65 degrees Fahrenheit, while just a few feet higher, the smoke was carried clean away. No black soot, no stifling haze, just rhythm. They hung a pot from a tripod just above the flame, where the heat licked, but never burned. A slow stew could simmer all night, fed by one ember that refused to die. He watched the coals glow each breath, matching their rise and fade. It wasn't roaring. It wasn't fading. It was steady like life itself. Outside, the storm still clawed at the hide. Inside, the fire whispered back. They didn't conquer the cold. They danced with it. They listened to it breathe. And that rhythm, quiet, ancient, perfect, kept them alive. The fire breathed low. The teepee walls whispered. Now. The warmth had to stay. The Native Americans knew the ground could steal your life before the wind ever touched you. He'd seen men sleep on frozen dirt and never wake again. So they built the floor like a living skin layered warm breathing from beneath. First came the dry grass, thick and springy. They gathered it before the freeze, sun dried and soft. Then came the buffalo hides, hair side down holding the air like a cushion. On top robes or blankets, whatever they had left that wasn't stiff with frost. It wasn't comfort. It was insulation nature's own heated mattress. When the body lay down, the grass flexed, trapping warmth beneath the hides. The floor rose to meet the person, never cold, never damp. He could feel the heat from the coals spreading across the hides like invisible water. By dawn, that bed held near 60 degrees Fahrenheit, while the storm outside clawed at minus 30. Sometimes they buried a few warmed stones near the center, covered them with sand and hide. Not to cook, but to hold. Hours later, when the wind still howled, that warmth still breathed up through the floor. He checked it with his hand, dry, warm, alive. Not burning, not freezing, just right. Like the earth had joined them in their fight to stay human. They didn't need a bed frame or insulation rolls. The ground itself became their ally. A quiet partner beneath the storm. The teepee wasn't just a shelter, it was a system. The air breathed, the fire breathed, even the ground breathed. He sat back watching the children sleep, their breath slow, their faces calm. Outside, the world was frozen stiff. Inside, the earth itself felt warm. They didn't escape winter, they worked with it. And that wisdom, layered like grass and hide, is what kept them alive. Above the fire, the teepee opened to the sky, a dark mouth in a sea of white. Snow spun through it sometimes, but that hole, it was smarter than it looked. The Native Americans called it the teepee's mind. It thought. It decided how the air moved, how the smoke left, how the warmth stayed. He'd learned that on storm nights, you never close it tight. If you did smoke, would roll down, crawl into your throat and blind your eyes. But if you left it open too wide, the wind would bite through, stealing the heat faster than the fire could make it. So he watched the stars when they vanished behind clouds. He shifted the flap just so. Ropes pulled, hides tilted. A few inches changed everything. The teepee began to breathe again. It was a balance between earth and sky. The smoke hole acted like a living lung, drawing out the stale air, pulling in the clean. When the fire breathed low, it lifted the warmth upward, but never let it escape too fast. Some nights he'd sit beneath it and watch the smoke drift out in ribbons, thin and blue, curling like thoughts. That hole, it spoke of intelligence born from necessity. No chimneys, no dampers, just instinct, precision, and generations of listening to the wind. At minus 30, the air inside stayed near 60, not by force, by design. The tippy didn't fight the weather, it cooperated with it. The smoke hole wasn't decoration, it was wisdom in motion. 
As the storm roared outside, the flap shifted slightly and the smoke slipped out without sound. They didn't build perfection overnight. They listened to the cold until the house itself could think. The teepee breathed, the fire glowed, the smoke rose clean, and around it they gathered. The Native Americans understood something we often forget. Warmth was never just heat, it was shared space. It was trust. They sat in a circle, never in corners, because corners don't exist in a teepee. Each person faced the flame, backs to the hide knees nearly touching, children closest to the center, elders just behind. Everyone connected by air, by breath, by body. When one moved, the others adjusted. When one stirred the fire, the warmth reached all. It wasn't just clever design, it was community built into architecture. He'd seen it every winter night. The baby slept wrapped in fur, the mother whispered songs older than memory, and the old man stared into the coals reading the wind's story, each breath rising, each heartbeat sinking with the slow rhythm of the flame. The heat spread evenly because the people did. No one blocked the flow. No one hoarded warmth. Even the fire seemed to understand. When the wind roared outside, the typey leaned, but inside the circle held. They didn't sit apart. They closed ranks like fingers around a cup. That's how you survive cold this deep. Not alone. Together. At 60 degrees, it wasn't luxury. It was life. The teepee wasn't just a shelter. It was a lesson. If heat moves, share it. If life breathes, breathe together. And as the storm eased, the family stayed close, not because they had to, but because warmth felt right when it was shared. They didn't just survive the cold. They survived with each other. The storm had passed. The teepee stood still quiet as thought. Ashes glowed under the faint morning light, and inside, warmth still lingered. The Native Americans never saw heat as something to own. It wasn't a number on a thermostat. It was a rhythm, a conversation between fire, air, earth, and people. They didn't hoard it. They shaped it. They shared it. He knew warmth wasn't just survival. It was balance. Too much fire, the hides dry and crack. Too little breath turns to frost. So they listened. They adjusted. They learned to move with nature, not against it. That's the part we've forgotten. Today, we chase warmth through switches and walls, burning fuel to keep rooms hot while hearts stay cold. We think insulation is comfort, but maybe. Comfort was the circle itself, because real warmth doesn't come from a heater. It comes from closeness, from breath, from being part of the same fire. He looked around the storm, fading the snow, melting into silence. The teepee wasn't just a shelter against the cold. It was proof that wisdom burns cleaner than wood. They didn't conquer winter, they understood it. And maybe that's the lesson we're still trying to relearn, that warmth isn't something you keep, it's something you become. The fire burned low, the storm had passed. Outside the plains shimmered white and endless. Inside the teepee glowed with the kind of warmth that doesn't fade when the fire dies. The man sat still, the last light of the flame flickering across his face. Snow melted from the buffalo hide, above dripping slow, a rhythm, a heartbeat. They survived, not because they had firewood, but because they had understanding. A teepee wasn't just a shelter, it was a teacher. It taught patience, it taught balance, it taught that warmth comes not from walls, but from wisdom. He looked toward the rising dawn, and for a moment, even the wind seemed to listen. That's how the Native Americans stayed warm, not by fighting the cold, but by learning its rhythm.